hello, you are listening to AM 1045 KAOP. My name is Danny. I'm Joseph. And this is Accents on Purpose, a weekly radio show where we cover all of the music in Seattle, the Pacific Northwest, and beyond. Every tune, every chord. Uh, Joseph. Hey. How you doing? I'm doing really well. How are you? Not too bad. Good. <laughs> What's new with you this week? Uh, I found out, uh, I was reading Back to the Future trivia because it's one of my favorite <laughs> movies ever. Um, and I found out that Eric Stoltz, the original Marty McFly, is a method actor. And he refused to be, go by anything except for Marty on set. And I think that that's really funny because it's just like a weird 80s comedy and not some sort of drama. And I found that really interesting. He's a method actor. He's a method actor for Back to the Future. Tight. Yeah. So. Uh, it would have been better if he would have been a meth actor on Back to the Future. That's what I thought you were saying at first. Yeah, I know, he would have done a bunch of meth. Yeah. <laughs> That's not what I meant, but that would have been... But how, do you think the, how do you think the hoverboard hovers, man? <laughs> was he was in that movie Killing Zoe, though, which he was like a heroin dealer in that oh, movie yeah. and a heroin yeah. addict. So do you think to prepare for it, he dealt heroin? To a- like, absolutely. Yeah. There's, that's the only way to prepare for being in the movie Back to the Future. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, our, listeners are probably, <laughs> our listeners are probably wondering who's talking, so we'd love to introduce you. Okay, uh, this week we have Seattle's hottest band. Uh, <laughs> Not just because of the heat wave. <laughs> uh, that actually is the reason. He whose ox is gourd. Uh, do you folks want to introduce yourself and say your name and what you do in the band? Uh, yeah, I'm Michael Sparks, and I play bass guitar, and I'm a human person. I'm Lisa Mungo, I do synths and vocals, and I think I'm human. <laughs> Depends on the day. <laughs> Brian McClellan, man. I, uh, I play guitar, I yell sometimes, and I like make t-shirts and stuff. <laughs> Email people a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. About the band or just yeah. about anything? You know, all kinds of stuff. Are you a, a spam bot? Stuff. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you get that thing I sent you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You could be earning $4,500 a month from home right now. <laughs> Sitting on your ass. Yeah. You got my fucking nice email. Yeah. <laughs> my cousin in Africa has just recently died and has a $2 million fortune. Hey, listen, I'm going to need your routing number first. <laughs> it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. I w- that would be great if uh, we ever get around to having like a email list that people can sign up for. And this is like first name, last name, email address, and it says routing number. <laughs> and just, I would like, wonder if anyone would put their information in there. Oh, they would. And, and, or if they would like report us to the feds. I bet there's like one person that would either, like, I don't know. Little column A, little column B. Wait, when, yeah, when, yeah. When, when you say there's one person who would do that, are you thinking that maybe it's you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah That's a distinct myself. possibility. It would probably be like <laughs> someone's grandma. I'd be like, oh, like, yes, of course. I like, hope the, someone's grandma the machine's is telling me what to do. And wants to sign up to get emails from me. Uh, if you're listening and you have grandchildren, please email us at uh, <laughs> <laughs> on purpose podcast at gmail.com. With your just, just send us money. <laughs> just tell us. <laughs> We're too lazy to even scam you. Just send us the money. Also, be careful going up the stairs. Oh, speaking <laughs> speaking of scams, speaking of scams. Was there a lot of scams? Do you know what was a big scam this week? What was a scam? Uh, did you see a thing that was going around the internet a little bit where a woman claimed that a neighbor had left a note in her yard saying, uh, "Your neighbor, your neighborhood, or sorry, your yard's too gay." Um, oh yeah, I heard about that. It was a scam. She made it up. And oh, the police weird. are investigating. That's bizarre. What it, are they going to investigate? <laughs> yeah, no, that's no. I get it. What you mean, like, haven't they solved it? <laughs> well, I think they can't Close prove the it. Oh, but they yeah. talked to every one of their neighbors. Every one of her neighbors. She, they went to her house and asked if they could have the piece of paper to try to fingerprint it. She wouldn't give it to them. Oh, that's uh, interesting. And she got forty three thousand dollars from GoFundMe. Oh, weird. Wow. Yeah. That's banana town. Entrepreneur. So if she wrote it, is that, is that technically fraud then? If she, or does it really not matter because it's doing outside thing? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Wow. Uh, well, if you donated to that GoFundMe, yeah. uh, email us at uh, <laughs> accessonpurposepodcastemail.com. But you know at what? Email.com. We, uh, we graciously, uh, you know, uh, this band graciously is giving up their uh, weekend plans, so uh, we should get to interviewing them. Yeah. So um, I feel like their band gets a lot of like genres thrown at it, like shoegaze and metal gaze I read that which I've never heard that before sure do you feel like when you, when you <laughs> <laughs> we made it up <laughs> when you read those things do you feel like you're accurate and how would like how would you describe your sound I think that's I, some of it's accurate you know we write 
different kinds of songs all the time. You know, we, we wrote like slower, heavier stuff with like really pretty layers of atmospherics and people called it like doom gaze or metal gaze a lot. Right. Which that came around like when Yesu, when people talk about like Yesu or Isis or like old, slow, heavy, you know, and now that's kind of devolved in the modern music scene into like post metal just in general. So it's like sometimes they get, you know, they, they say different stuff, but we're, we have a lot of different stuff that we like to do too. Some of, some of it's heavier and some of it's faster now, like goes up and down, you know, depends. Have you read ever like one description that you're just like, what the fuck are they even saying? <laughs> oh, there's <laughs> lots of stuff. I feel like yeah. that almost all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so you disagree with everything he just oh, said? Oh, I just have no idea what he just said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't think that we, I mean, I think that there's like the general, like Brian kind of paves this general sort of landscape in which we operate. And then, but after that, I don't know. I don't even know what you'd call our band. It's very I mean, loud. It, yeah, that's a, I agree. Uh, yeah. I feel like there's a metal bass there, but you don't. It's more experimental. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. That's I think well, what, we're, yeah, what we're trying to do. Some metal drum. <laughs> okay, good one. <laughs> was that a, was that a pun that you were making? Yes. Oh, I'm trying. Hey, trying. Oh, nice one, buddy. <laughs> 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 that's his favorite reaction to his joke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Classic. <laughs> Um, so also, you guys released all your previous stuff on your own. Is that true? Did I have that right? Yeah, um, a lot of it. Yeah, we most most of it. Yeah, we put out two or three EPs on our own before the the third EP uh, got picked up by Cafe Vita and issued on vinyl. Oh, cool. So yeah. Which yeah is radical. Uh, so what? How did that happen? Like for uh, for our non Seattle listeners, because this AM this AM broadcast that we have is about like. 47 watts of I'd power. I'd say about 47. So I'm, I'm yeah, about 47. Yeah. Everybody but, they, but they're tube watts. Yeah. 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 So yeah. It's not wrong. There's got to be some conversion there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so for our non-Seattle listeners, why don't you explain what Cafe Vita is? So Cafe Vita is a local uh, cafe, roastery, uh, you know, coffee shop. And they're just, you know, they're, they're, an, they're an awesome spot. Lisa used to work for them for a little bit. You see in like different, uh, you know, like New York, LA and stuff, these coffee roasteries, they have this like really cool modern presence and you know, they're, they're like hip. They're sometimes putting out records and, and uh, you know, branding themselves a little bit more forward. And that's, that's the thing that Cafe Vita wanted to do. Lisa was working marketing for them for a while. I mean, you know what like? It's actually pretty simple. I was just talking to one of the owners about what I was doing, and he listened to our music, and he's like, "That sounds like fucking coffee." And yeah. yeah. <laughs> and well, what's funny it is that exactly like coffee. Yeah, yeah. I really didn't, but he loved it. On it was kind of just a personal decision. Like it, it really just came from him. Uh, I think loving us as people and like um, that relationship and it extended to him wanting to help us out and he, he heard something in the music and he said, I want to help you guys out. Um, it really helped too because Brian does a lot of the graphic design and he basically did a mock-up of the entire, what it would look like, the posters, all that kind of stuff. Presented a full package to him and said, this is what it'll be and he signed on for it. He's oh. like, the music's great, the, the aesthetic's awesome, let's go. It's cool that there's a personal touch from them too, like knowing them and being yeah. more yeah. part of the community. Totally. Mike's a cool guy, man. Mike, yeah. Mike has, he's his, he's, he'll be there for you. If you need something, he's there, so. Yeah. He did that for us and yeah. we'll never forget that. Well, and Kevin Vita's pretty supportive of music in general because during the block party, they have bands yeah. play inside. KXP. Yeah. KXP, like, KXP yeah. yeah, broadcast live from the cafe and they have bands play there. I love that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I love and, that. Yeah, and they, they usually videotape them before. Yeah, because you saw FedEx play. That. I did, and I'm actually in the video of the KXP thing. You can see me dancing really awkwardly in the corner. Yeah, That's I'd it. like well, to see awesome. that. Well, let, you know awesome. what? Not right now. Oh, yeah, too late. <laughs> We're going to play it. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm on history>. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, but boy, yeah, really good. You look good. You're I'm actually good. wearing the same shirt in that video as I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're I so like much it. more handsome in oh, real life. Thank you. Yeah, different haircut. <laughs> yeah. Is that shirt? Should we describe the shirt HP? to our non-AM <laughs> listeners? I think you should. Yes. Yeah. It's plaid. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the listeners are huge. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Vivid so description. description. Yeah. yeah. It's wonderful. <laughs> Um, so well, I mean, I'd say I'd, I'd say continue because it has the like kind of like pearl type well, buttons. Well, the thing oh, is, yeah. Mike Sparks, you'd wear that shirt. Why don't you describe? You know, it? I'm not really a metal button guy. I think it's a really? regular like yeah. Western type shirt. Yeah, I have one, a gray one, and I yeah, I don't like the metal. Your buttons. shirt collection is getting fantastic. It's getting obtuse. It's, it's getting it's really very <laughs> very <laughs> abstract. It's getting strange. I, I bought a yeah. polka dot shirt. I'll have to show you. <laughs> well, you can continue talking, but you at some point I will show you. What's this. the one with the? It looks like. A, some patio furniture on a yacht. Oh, <laughs> nice. No, I don't have a shirt. Do you ever like wear that? a shirt? <laughs> <laughs> like, I would love to see you play a show in that shirt. It's yeah. actually pretty funny. I always, I always feel like I'm like the dude they just found last minute to re- replace the bass player in us. <laughs> because like we'll get on stage and Brian and Lisa and John all look like you know really cool and they're like dressed in black and like you know looking badass and then I'm up there and it's like you know I have like this little kid shirt on and I'm like tired and I'm like hey like, I don't know how to plug my bass in like, like I need Brian's help like it's hey. so funny it, it'd, be, it'd be funny if you had like if you brought a bunch of your shirts on tour and just sold them like not with your logo or like anything on it just here, like your yeah. shirts that'd be great that'd yeah be... we start like a Mike Sparks yeah. line of clothing yeah and, and then like people sold. start showing up at the shows dressed up like you sure yeah, yeah. and then they're just bummed out I mean basically <laughs> Just in general. Yeah. Uh, it's basically like it's basically like the Cairo model, right? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That works. Uh, I'll keep it. I'll keep it. I get another stab a ruski there. Yeah. Um so ha- like you have a bunch of EPs out, but do you have any plans to like Release an LP. I feel like I, I, everything I read about you guys is you've been building to that for a while. And are you going to release it yourselves? It's like a billion part question. It's okay. No, it's okay. It's yeah. fine. Yeah, we um, we're in the process of uh, getting our first official full length is coming out. I hey, probably it's October 9th. Oh, cool. Yeah, we haven't made an official announcement. This will probably be out by the time we get it out. But it's coming out on Bleeding Light Records. We did our last seven inch on uh, on Bleeding Light. Our good friend Paul, um, he offered to put it out initially, uh, our full length, and then we said, well, we'll we're gonna sit on it for a minute. And we did the seven inch because we had some we had a couple songs we wanted to do, mm-hmm. and that came out. And uh, we still didn't quite know what we wanted to do with the record, and we just had such a good experience with him that we you know we were like, yeah, let's go for it. And, and so uh, we're in the process of that. He he got the test presses for the vinyl yesterday. Yeah, oh, so, so yeah. excited, dude. We're super stoked. We've got um, some PR stuff lining up, and I just started working on some tour dates today. So Awesome. But the record, uh, the LP, the full length, is coming out in October. So we're getting, we're gearing up for that. I think this is our first scoop. I think this is our first yeah, like, time yeah. anyone's given information. And, and yeah. exclusive. And exclusive. <laughs> you heard it here yeah, first. first. Turn to us for God. semi-breaking news. The, the fucking, you know, the Guardian's going to be linking to us. Oh, the Stranger's yeah. going to be linking to Huffington us. Huffington Post. The yeah. fucking Huff, 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 the, yeah. Huff Post. Huff I'd actually like to take this time to show my Huffington Post tattoo. Oh. <laughs> I'm joking. No. <laughs> After like, talking about your shirts, I'm ready sure. for anything. Sure, we're in for a wild ride. Do you, <laughs> want to take some sketchy, you want to take some sketchy Polaroids of us on the couch yeah. you can sell to the Guardian as well? <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. We can do that. We're down. I'd okay. like to look tired for America. <laughs> that would be a great title to your autobiography. That is absolutely going to be the title. I would like to look tired for America. <laughs> I'm glad that you're doing it yeah. for America. I'm only yeah. looking tired for you. Yeah. Art for the people, man. Yeah. That's true. I'd be laying down if I wasn't here. <laughs> so I'm actually unfamiliar. <laughs> that look was great. The listeners will never see it. Oh, I know. Um, That's fine. So I'm un- actually unfamiliar with Bleeding Light Records. And, and what they do. Well, did you? We should explain like, how we got connected with Paul in the first place. 
yeah. via Twitter, Twitter actually. Yeah. Twitter.com. So yeah, are they like local or is Paul? No, no. Arizona. Arizona, cool. Yeah, yeah Paul um, lives in uh, Tucson. Uh, That's a dry heat. Phoenix. Yeah. Phoenix. Sure. He's in Phoenix. I always say Tucson. Phoenix. But, uh, yeah, he's been out there for a while. He's put out four or five releases. I think this will be his sixth, mm-hmm. our full length. Um, and he's opened up a distro, and he's helping other bands put some stuff out. He put out uh, some releases for our friends in uh, Noisatron. Uh, he's working with Serial Hawk, some other good friends of ours. Uh, both bands have put stuff out this year. Uh, Noisatron put some things out, and Serial Hawk has their record coming out with him. So he's working on uh, press and distribution and stuff for people. It's a small operation, but it's going fast. Yeah, so, it, it's, yeah. it's coming up. Yeah. So what was the tweet that... Uh linked you to uh, <laughs> you it said was, you met on Twitter that's probably the first time you've ever said that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you'd be surprised <laughs> yeah that's a good point we, I was making a law and order joke <laughs> <laughs> you just awesome. spit all over me <laughs> 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 oh my god oh, can we cut that beer snore and edit it I'm so sorry oh, it's Wonderful. fine that was funny I didn't I was know that hot. It's yeah. Cool. <laughs> Wait. So, who, like Law and Order, Law and Order, Law and Order SVU, Law and Order, Crime Law Special Order Crimes S- Division. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Correct. It's a very sensitive case. <laughs> <laughs> what, what What was the tweet? It was something about making a joke about the ending of Breaking Bad, and him and I had been watching like the last couple episodes at like four in the morning. I was stoned out of my mind. And so every week they would air one of the last episodes. I'd be stoned out of my mind. I'd be sitting in the front room at the Black Lodge, watching it, just fucking wasted. And I'd go on and talk some shit to whoever the fuck, whoever was up on Twitter. Yeah. And it was Paul was doing the same thing in Arizona, smoking weed and talking shit, watching Breaking Bad. And they just said something about like, you know, he's like, oh, that last scene, that last scene was so good. And I was like, yeah, what if they cut to the, like, the last scene and it was just executive producer, Dick Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and he was like, let me call you tomorrow. <laughs> and so we started talking. So, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty cool. Do you think Dick Wolf is going to get a copy of this record? No, he gets he gets points on the record. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, the contract with him is it's terrible. <laughs> I don't know why we signed that. Yeah. I'm going to be moving boxes like in Law & Order episodes. Yeah, next week. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Working back and forth. Yeah, so good. I don't know, I saw the guy last week. Yeah, that's like, so good, dude. <laughs> Who's that, the yeah. murder police? <laughs> you get interviewed yeah. by the cops. So good. <laughs> <laughs> one thing that I've wanted to say to someone that I just haven't had the opportunity is okay. One of the things I like about Law and Order is people say really important things and then they just walk away and they don't say goodbye. Right. And I'm yeah. waiting for that to happen to be able to be like, you just Law and Ordered me. I can't believe you. <laughs> is that what that is? is true. Just say something like totally crucial to the case. Oh, I love shit just, like yeah. that. I do that a lot at my bar, except I'd sexual innuendo and then I walk around <laughs> and just leave them hanging on. They just shrug. They always like shrug, like, here's a super important piece of evidence you definitely needed. And then they just like walk away. Yeah. Yeah. You can't do that. You can't just walk away from people in real life. Especially the police. Goodbye. The yeah. police would be like, hang on, wait. <laughs> I need to verify that. Was it, did, you see, did you see a man wearing a blue shirt yesterday at yeah. 6.30? No, but I saw a guy at 6.32 covered in blood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. Exactly. It's like, all right, later. <laughs> yeah, see ya. Thank you. I, just, I wish they would do something like that and then just like punctuate it super weird before he leaves. Like, yeah, covered in blood. Okay, penis kisses. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you know, just, just like some kind of like what? Yeah. It's like yeah, force fire. See ya. Yeah. You know, just like whatever. It's like <laughs> forest fire. Yeah. Forest fire. See ya. Uh, out. That's a new T-shirt. Yeah. yeah. Or cool. or they like give a fuck like hey uh, I'm DJ at this bar later night. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd love to see Jerry Orbach at a bar watching a. Well, he's dead. DJ. You fucking Ooh, ass. God. Wow. You're right. Too oh, soon. Things just got dark. <laughs> Next question. Uh, <laughs> Edit. Wait, do you guys do you have questions written down? That's helpful. Yeah. I don't know why uh, I said yeah, that. Maybe that's, really <laughs> 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 that's helpful. Uh, Our listeners at home know you guys are organized now. Yeah. Uh, so on your last EP, if I have this right, the Rumor 7-inch, did you guys work You with might have it right, it might be a rumor. <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah. You're uh, killing like it. it today. I yes. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. 
Um, you or maybe it was Nightshade, but you guys got to work with Chris Common. No, Nightshade. Nightshade. That was okay. yeah, that was the Nightshade. He is one of my favorite. So you producers. did have a role. I did have a role. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was working with him like? Uh, wait, wait, why don't you say some of the other things that he produced so people can understand? Oh, like like, like, um, like this arms are snake. Oh, this arms. This arms yeah. are snake. This arms are snake. <laughs> 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 this arms are snake. <laughs> this arms are snake. <laughs> this arms are snake. They're terrible. This arms are snake. And they're really bad at <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> It's we all have a foreign nationals who love these We're rolling these all the rocks for you. <laughs> this is now you have to say all the rest of the, uh, the yeah. bands well, with I the same know. accent. The next one, uh, Helmsley. Uh, <laughs> Helms Alley. Yeah. Helms, Helms Alley. Helms Alley. Helms Alley. We're all just yelling. That's true. Um, is that another one of the bands? We're all just yelling. We're all, and we're all just yelling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's my solo project. Yeah, so I'm, just, I'm a really big fan of his... Not turning. <laughs> his drum playing and knob turning. Uh, fuck you, Danny. Um, yeah. So, what was working with him like? Was it special or? It was awesome. It special, was, definitely special. It um, was intense. It was really intense. He's, yeah. you know, meticulous. Like yeah. he, especially as he's like going through. I don't know how to describe it really, other than. Well, I thought I was like, you know, at practices and stuff. We've been doing this band for a while, and I like to really like get get like really tight with the band play the stuff over and over make sure we know everything front to back you know you're you're watching all your parts and stuff and we got in the hitting studios yeah hitting your marks you know a minus every night whatever there's some fingering or oh, some <laughs> yeah. oh my goodness oh, there is some middle fingers flying oh, is what i meant God, to say dude. uh but <laughs> I mean, I always, I like to keep, I like to run a tight ship, and I've never been in the studio with someone that was so, like, aware of every little thing. Which was, was great. Like, yeah. yeah. I yeah. loved it. Yeah, and it was great. I mean, because that was, that was a record where we wanted to take, you know, we had kind of recorded, we recorded with Tad before that, which was awesome. Oh, cool. Um, but before that, we kind of recorded on our own, and the tendency is to, like, you know, you can kind of get lax if you're recording yourself, but, you know, we wanted to go to someone that had a good ear that put out, like, a bunch of records that we loved anyway. Um, he had recorded some of my friends from back in New Mexico, and I loved their record. Who's so, that? Uh, a band called Coma Recovery. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they had, like, really dug working with him, so we went in and, and tracked for three or four days, did two <clears throat> songs and part of a third that didn't end up getting released, but... Yeah, that was a that was a really awesome studio experience. Like we couldn't have been happier with how everything. What studio did you do that? Was it like Red Room? Red Room. Yeah. 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 Matt Bayless and Chris Common were partners for a while. At that point, yeah, Yeah. still partners. Yeah, Yeah. and it was great introduction to that space as well Mm -hmm. because we ended up working there several more times since that since that experience. Yeah, Yeah, we did the drums and bass for the upcoming full length there. Oh, cool. Yeah, Yeah. and then which of which Matt Bayless ended up doing mixing and yeah so yeah it worked out it was great working with him yeah that's exciting They're, those are two of like the best seattle producers i feel yeah, yeah. i think a little guy named jose is pretty good uh, I, I like jose as well former okay. guest yeah <laughs> i <Yeah>. understand <laughs> you're just sitting over there making ridiculous comments Comprende. I mean, are you are you writing Who a description? Of, are you writing a description of the podcast? Yeah, because for yeah, I know exactly <laughs> what I do. For what else do I do on this fucking thing? Yeah. Hey. I don't know what that was all about, but I would, <laughs> I, would, I would like to say I would like to say that Robert Cheek engineered our record there, and just I wanted to put his name in the mix. Oh he's yeah, like, he's like my favorite engineer in Seattle. He's yeah. up and coming for. We should sure. talk about some stuff he's done too. Yeah, besides just, uh, us, he just finished the new uh, Band of Horses record, oh, cool. which is pretty cool. I didn't even know they were still making records. I, was I just know, to say that. right? Apparently, they are. Yeah. Is it a reunion? No, oh, okay. no, <laughs> just a union. Uh, but he's also done like. Uh, a lot of Terra Mellos records. Oh, that's um, he's, awesome. Yeah, he, he, like, pretty much... He like, worked on Deftone. Yeah, he's right? worked with the Deftones. I'm having a hard time talking now. So <laughs> that's great. Just give me a second. I said this <laughs> offer snakes. So. That's true. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank matter. you. That did put me at, at ease, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm glad our mistakes put you at ease. Yeah, no, that's good. That's great. Hey, we're just all growing together. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Things are changing. Anyway, he's really good. Uh, Chelsea Wolf. Oh yeah, he's done Chelsea oh, Wolf. Oh, awesome. He's done. A, he's done a lot of stuff. His track record is really, really cool. Cool. He's a great guy. Our record sounds pretty good too. Oh yeah, can we figure this too? Yeah. We're, working with working with Bob, working with Chris, working with Matt. That was like 
those are those have all been really good experiences. Like getting in with Chris for the first time at Red Room, and then working with Bob through this newest release. Like, you know, going back to like what you were asking initially was just like, what is that experience like? And as as a band to make it to the point where you can start to go to studios like that and work with people like that. Yeah, Chris, Matt, what a gift. Bob. Like it's it's awesome. It makes our job so much easier. I mean, it's strenuous for us to like play well and get in that vibe sometimes because they will demand that yeah. of you they're yeah. going to demand excellence and you know and that's the best part because in the end yeah. it probably makes you a better band yeah yes. oh yeah definitely and that, that's been really cool you know, working with those guys shaka shaka shaka, shaka life righteous, dude. bro shaka life <laughs> wow. brian uh at what point did you realize that you were so disappointed in all the pedals available that you decided to build your own? Build my oh, build my own pedals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm disappointed in everything. No, I, uh, I, uh, I don't know. I'm just a nerd. For he this. has a problem. <laughs> we're, we've been talking well, about. No, so this. You, With you, gear? you did you yeah, built yeah, your own? Yeah, oh yeah, like he, I've, I've definitely met musicians who are addicted to gear. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know yeah. where we're going there after is. this podcast? Where? Tell them where we're going after this podcast. Going to Northgate. <laughs> he bought another cab. Why? Whoa. It's I mean, a half great. stack. This is what it's I'm fun. talking about. <laughs> no big deal. No, I can quit anytime I want. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's fine. I paid all the bills. It's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you make your own pedals. Well, yeah. So uh, you made your own pedal, right? Um, I she actually got me for my birthday uh, this last year, like a workshop to build a, you know, uh, build your own pedal. It's like build your own clone. You know the build your own clone series. So did you build your own pedal? No. Yeah, it's a pedal that I built, uh, Mike. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, you can go to like uh, byoc.com, build your own clone, and they have kits for like famous pedals, things like that. Oh. So you can you buy all the parts, and then it gives you instructions like how to piece it together. If you have like even just basic soldering skills, you can kind of get through it. But uh, the guitar store up on Aurora started offering. Um, like courses where they, you know, you pay them a fee, they get you the kit, and then they also have like all the workstations set up. So she got me that for my birthday, and that was awesome. I went and built a fuzz face that was, yeah, that was killer. Like fuzz I got, face. I got way into like fuzzes. I've mostly been. <laughs> into, <laughs> into, <laughs> into, <laughs> I don't know what it's like. It's like laughing. It's pretty funny. Looking in your face while you say fuzzes. I was like the fuzzes. Like, really unusual uh, yeah I mean yeah, guitar sorry, sorry. guitar tone is like a yeah it's a thing I nerd out over that all the time but um, on the last on that rumors EP I got into like more just like fuzz oriented shit just like blown out big muffs and and uh, she got me that course and I built that I built a fuzz face and started working on um, there's like a reverb I was messing with and a ping pong delay but ping I mean, pong delay yeah <laughs> I, I collect pedals and just I got I got so much gear it's well I have to admit your dedication to gear shows in your guitar tone oh thanks which I find it <laughs> thank you well I, I do you. oh fuck you Danny god damn it wow. um <laughs> I appreciate that thank yeah. you yeah no, cause it's great. it's a thing that I think is super fucking important mm -hmm. and there's all these there's people that just buy shit and they just have it and they like take pictures with it and they're like <laughs> I was like, what are they like? <laughs> they go, yeah. And then they go on Facebook and they post in their groups about having their amps and stuff. And that's the thing. I do that. But, <laughs> but, but part of it is like, yeah, well, you know, like when you work with uh, those producers and things like that, like you get to a certain level where you're paying attention, you're hearing frequencies, you're hearing how certain things fit on, you know, on top of each other. Like Mike. The last record that the, we just recorded another seven inch that hasn't entirely been announced yet either. But like we sat down and focused on like Mike's bass tone and just like got in there and just dialed that. That was super fun. Yeah, like, were, you, fun. were you awake for that or? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was. You were shirt shopping. <laughs> I was playing the most ridiculous riffs in the world back turned to Brian and just like letting him do it. Actually, awesome. I don't want to. I don't want to take credit where this guy's. Responsible Plants for all that Primus stuff. Yeah, I, yeah, I was just like, yeah, <laughs> I was probably like five beers in, like, 
just like dancing like Bootsy Collins, some, like just being unusual. Getting some Steely Dan in there. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, I mean, from, you know. I'd like to actually continue painting that picture. Excuse me. So, you know, from, from seeing you play and, and then now hearing you talk about your songs, you seem very meticulous. How long does it take before, like, from like starting a song till you play it in front of people? Because I'm getting a feeling it's like a long time. It's a long time. Yeah. Sometimes it's, you know, some some of the songs. Years. Sometimes yeah. it's years. Yeah. Some of the songs on our full length we had, you know, we started writing in 2010. And that's coming out. You know, that'd be like five years. Yeah. Oh, wow. But, I mean, they go through different incarnations. Like, we've had different lineups and things like that. And sometimes those, don't, those songs don't get used here or, or whatever. Or, like, you know, sometimes, like, Lisa or Mike will come up with a part and... We think about it for a while, and we kind of just take our time. Like maybe we want to do this. Maybe we'll just wait and like see how we like it. You know, it's like sometimes you just sit on like a pile of riffs. Like everyone has like you know your riff diary where you just you know if it's not for this project, maybe it's for something else. Don't, like, don't save those on your phone because you might lose that phone and then lose all those riffs. The Kirk Hammett. Yes. The Kirk Hammett thing. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I read about that too. Nobody Fuck wants it. Kirk Hammett's riffs. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Good point. The person that Not found today. that phone, if they made a bootleg, that would be the most amazing bootleg ever made. Yeah, I would really like to hear it. It would just like press all those riffs into like a four disc record set. And a picture <laughs> I say fuck that. Cover. Just make them ringtones. <laughs> <laughs> and release them only as Can you imagine how the ringtones feel to Kirk? Whatever, though. That's the future. Dude. That's the future. The future get is down. belittling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, fucking that's truth. Yep. Yeah. Did uh, you guys did you guys hear there was someone that put out a while back a mixtape that was them just wandering around a guitar center with a microphone? I heard about it. <laughs> I, didn't yeah. listen, I didn't listen to it, but I heard because I was I saw that when I was at a computer without speakers and I forgot about it. Yeah. yeah. Good. So what was that like nineteen eighty or <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking terrible. Maybe that was, that was at like, work. I, okay, was okay. Okay. Like, I was like <laughs> <laughs> like, Red Hot Chili Peppers, and oh, then also, God. like, a bunch of classic, like, Led Zeppelin stuff, but really poorly. You know, and, like, the thing, like, listening to <laughs> Kirk Hammett to talk about, like, how he's like, oh, I had 250 riffs. Had, like, <laughs> that is my favorite Yeah, and he's just like, I had, like, hours of music. It was all on this phone. It's like, <clears> you know what, man? Have you heard that <clears> Guitar <throat> Center mixtape? You walk in there, and there's, like, a million fucking douchebags that are pumping out the same level of quality <laughs> yeah. back in the right fucking now. Yeah. Yeah. Right fucking now we used to work there for like years. It's just, that's it's how just we met as a band. We met. <laughs> we met. Well, I didn't work at no guitar center. I, I was in a band with someone who worked at a guitar center. And oh yeah. Every like they were obviously very frustrated with music <laughs> during oh, yeah. that time in general. Yeah. If, if they've been, I mean, if you work at guitar center, you hear like seventeen terrible covers of "Sweet Child of Mine" every day. <laughs> yeah. You know. But uh, it's you mean a, Cheryl Crow's cover of Sweet Child of the Mind? Does she have a cover? She, she does, yeah. Does she do a chill wave? I was just cover? talking about yeah. chill wave. <laughs> she does a chill wave cover. She's really modern. I was just is talking about Cheryl Crow. Did you rock on that cover? No. Nope. Yeah, you were. I was. That Joe self-titled Pro. record's pretty good, bro. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah, well. Yeah, hey. you, get in the, <laughs> you get in the band long enough, Mike Sparks just starts singing Cheryl Crow. It happens. <laughs> it's true. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't want to talk. We're good. <laughs> <We're good. laughs> no. Uh, so now, um, I'm about to go on a little bit of a road trip. Yeah, I'm gonna head to Portland. I'm gonna head to Eugene. Gonna head to Eureka. But then I'm gonna stay for a little bit in Oakland. Oh fuck! Oh, oh, no. <laughs> so that works better gonna... than we. <laughs> no, why do you want to? You want to talk? About you want to talk? Let's bring that shit up. Sure. Yeah. Her her you want to talk about Raider Nation right yeah. now? Yeah. 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 I feel like we should talk yeah. about Oakland. It's so, do you have any tips yeah. for me oh. staying? In... Purple pants gang, dude. They're, they're, they're yeah, the if you're down there, can you get all my fucking dirty underwear <laughs> yeah. that are all over uh, the streets somewhere and just gather them for me? I seriously had... Okay, I only so, have two pairs left. So for... Okay. So <laughs> you want to explain what happened? Our fucking clothes got stolen. <laughs> <laughs> but how? Wait, your clothes? I read in an interview that you were robbed in Oakland. I didn't well, know a com- it was Well, what? A computer was taken? A anything, computer robbed you? Anything. A computer, a computer robbed you. Come on! I want your clothes, clothes you, mom. Ah. Yeah. No, it wasn't you that. Um, you, <laughs> you, I like that. 
Um, no, but basically <laughs> we were, all our gear was out of the van, loaded into the venue. We were about to go up and play. It was our turn. I went outside for a second and to find someone and I saw that just across the street from the venue, kind, kind of catty corner, our van, all the, the, the windows were broken out. So I ran out there just to be sure because I was like, there's no fucking way. Like, like what would they grab? It was grab? Like 10 they would, minutes. They would, like, it was, yeah, 10 it. minutes since we had been out there. Also, Hard. what would they want? There were sleeping bags and just our bags full of clothes and shit. I didn't know at the time that there was a computer. And let me tell you, that shit was rank. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean it was <laughs> disgusting. Yeah, you did not want that. Well, we had driven like twelve hours that day yeah. or something. You know, right. it was gross. But uh, anyway, so long story short, yeah, just don't park your car or van anywhere in the entire city of, of Oakland. <laughs> of so Oakland, yeah. You're, you're going to be exhausted in Oakland because you're constantly going to be driving around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was. It was a. Yeah, that was an experience. So, I mean, like, we've, uh, mm. we played one particular venue. I won't, uh, say which one. We played it a couple times. That's the last time we're playing that yeah. venue. Whoa. Um, Are you ever going to go back to Oakland in general? I mean, Oakland yeah. has a pretty cool punk scene. Yeah. yeah. Tragically. <laughs> so, yeah. it's, you have, you have, you have to, so you have to go, you know, because yeah. it's cool. And Tragically. Well, no, it's just because it's like, it's, there's just so much crime and shit, but like, it, it's like... The, the scene there is pretty okay. So it's awesome. You have to go. Like, uh, a long time ago, I was in Oakland. This was probably like, like, know, like 13 right? years ago. But I, me and a fr- my friend of mine was living in Oakland. We went to a nearby liquor store. It got robbed while we were there. What? And then... And then you're like, can I have a pack of Marlboro Lights? Well, no. Please? So the thing was, was, we didn't know if we could still buy alcohol until we tried. And we could. And then we just left. And it was like, the guy was bitching about being robbed as he was ringing us out. That's the best story I've ever heard. That's <laughs> incredible. That's, wow. That's can, not Can true. I still get... These beers? He's like, yeah, I don't. I need money. I don't have any kind money now. Like, Dude, that was a total bummer. That's like a pipe curb your enthusiasm. Yeah, like I could just use my card. Like, ah, uh, we did use a card. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just gonna use my debit card. He didn't card have any change. Right yeah. He didn't have any change. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I mean, you guess you got to start over. And what better to have you begin his new adventure? So, uh, when are you folks going to be playing the rock and roll again next? <laughs> the rock and roll! And it's kind of a lifestyle. Oh, you guys are a rock band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's, we'll simplify the genre. Yeah. Rock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bluesy we're playing geezers. July 17th at the Tractor Tavern with... Who are you um, playing with? Brothers of Sonic Cloth and Eris. Oh, shit. Sorry. Who's in Brothers of Sonic Cloth? The most beautiful prince in the yeah. world, Isn't Tad that, Doyle. Yeah, yeah. The most beautiful Tad Angel Doyle and Peggy. Peggy. No, Pam. Pam just got Pam. added. To yeah, the dude. Mix. Pam is the also actually Pam. Pam is the best person actually. The best. The best one. Just in general. Yeah, no, 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 in life. Yeah, all around. We're, we've established that. It's yeah. done. Everyone, everyone else who's been trying, you're <laughs> fucked. You heard yeah. here you first. Lost. You know what? Take the if weekend off. If you're not Pam, off, suck so. it. If you're not Pam, suck it is a lot different. All right, Joseph, uh, we got to go through a few segments, uh, tying up loose ends. Yeah. So, I don't know if you folks have heard, but there is a little bit of an accents on purpose curse where we talk about, like, we talked about the Josephine, the next week it closed down. That's true. We talked about haunted horses, they broke up. (laughs) Last week we had on Sarah Moody from End of Times Records. And one of her premier bands <laughs> has yeah. left the label. Yeah. Which congratulations to Wimps. Uh, they are on uh, Kill Rock Stars now. Yeah. But uh, Sarah, I feel that uh, coming on the podcast is the reason. Yeah, you lost we're the sorry band. about that. We're sorry about that. Uh, the flip side is uh, support <laughs> Wimps. They have yeah. a tape coming out in an LP on Kill Rock Stars. Uh, and they have a song up now that we'll listen to. Uh, but uh, God, yeah, I hope nothing bad happens to your band. Yeah, it would have been oh. nice if you include that in the email. I didn't know we were visiting a cursed <laughs> podcast. <laughs> also, I don't think any of us really fear death. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be fine. That's yeah. the fucking that'd truth. Yeah, for real. Uh, <laughs> shit is boring. Yeah, it's I don't even dark. wear my fucking seatbelt anymore. Whoa. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. real. You're I don't a really care car. about Deb. I just don't want you to get that $101 fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, good point about fines. <laughs> that is a good point about fines. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Uh, so okay, let's say let's say New Line Cinema <coughs> buys the rights. <laughs> New Line Cinema. 
to your band? <laughs> Who is going to play each of you? I don't know, because New Line Cinema is what I call my penis, so I don't understand <laughs> how that joke works. <laughs> 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 who's gonna play who's gonna play you I don't I don't know what do you think I, I, this is I also wait, wait, complicated because they're in a relationship with each other okay <laughs> why is that complicated well I mean what, what is, what he is likes it? to make it complicated I don't give a shit sure 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 say whatever you want to say oh. <laughs> of the uh, Who's gonna play you? Who's gonna play me? Nicholas Cage, probably. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. that's good. That's yeah. a good one. Okay. Always Nicholas Cage. Yeah. Yeah. Were you thinking Ashley Blue? Ashley Blue. Yeah. Yeah. Ashley Blue. Yeah. She's a porn star. The, the pornography <laughs> star. I only hear. Let me show you. Her, her break in the mainstream. I only look like her when she's sucking cock, though. <laughs> Oh, here, let me show you. It's very specific. If I had a nickel for every time I heard someone say that, oh you would have God. one nickel. <laughs> it's definitely the first time all of us have. But, it, that. but oh, I'll be, show but you. At least be a buffalo head. <laughs> I'm gonna show you this shit. That was a that was a slow joke. And it was also a pun because of the picture we're about to look at. <laughs> and, and a, buffalo head. And given head. Buffalo head. Oh. Okay, so are you guys she's ready for this? She's this. ready. She's gonna show you a dick sucking picture. See, I don't think it looks um, like you very much. I have no comment. Um, <laughs> oh, 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 no, please, no imitations. <laughs> no live imitations. <laughs> look at it! I, I, look at it! Our listeners at home, <laughs> we two didn't see what just happened. I hate this part. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, our next question I feel like has already been answered Moving almost. right along. <laughs> because we usually ask people... You know, when it comes to when you're gonna get coffee, where is your most? Where do you get the most bang for your buck? Where do you get the best drip for your dollar? We're talking dollar for drip. Where do you like to go get coffee? But I mean, okay. I feel that like you have to say Cafe V. They put out your fucking record. Well, yes. yeah. So besides yeah, Cafe V, we, we have to say Cafe V. What's your number two? Shell Station uh, uh, in. <laughs> oh, you like Krispy Kreme coffee. You almost no. poked him in the eye when you put oh, it at him. Just God, no, I don't like Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme tastes like liquid cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which one do you like? Uh, I mean, gas station coffee. He likes, I like, he likes, I like gas terrible gas station coffee because it means we're on tour. Wait, oh, yeah. oh, oh awesome. association. Yeah. 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 It's it's I don't even care. I like, I'll ta- you can taste like that. It's been filtered through a cardboard box or so, you know, it's just terrible. It's like blood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So a long time ago, I lived across the street from a gas station, and it was great. Be- it was a it was a Sunoco, and it was great because they had twelve ounces of coffee for fifty cents. Yes. And then sixteen ounces for a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> Which doesn't make it any doesn't sense. Make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. And so we lived across the street, and I would go and buy a fifty cent cup of coffee, and then come back and go buy another fifty cent cup of coffee. Yeah. My roommate would go and buy two twelve ounce coffees. Yeah. Because it's just the math and it worked out. Yeah. Terrible business model. Uh, I think they <laughs> are just they didn't still give a around? Sh- they are. <laughs> so it, this was in Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, not the from Cleveland. not the last time I was home, but the time before that. Is I, Cleveland still around? <laughs> I, I, that I have I, every morning. I check, dude. I, what is with you, Ohio people, man? <laughs> You're always talking about Ohio all the time. Everyone I know from Ohio is just like Ohio, Ohio. I'm like, fine. Like, I don't understand why you moved. I understand Whoa. why I moved. <laughs> <No, no, no. laughs> if you that's go to Cleveland, you'll understand why that well, that's great. Great. I moved. No, if you, you like go that. to the Sunoco station at the corner of 44th and Lorraine, you will you'll understand that. why I moved. Have you had their coffee? This story is actually why you moved. Yeah. No, no, I, I'm just... I, I, I've, noticed, I've noticed that, like... I just have a bunch of people, for whatever reason, like, since Seattle's such a transplant city, mm-hmm. there's, like, tons of people from Ohio, tons of people from Kansas... Tons of people from Minneapolis, and they, and the Ohio people are all really stoked on Ohio. I, I, I mean, you, it's, I want you I, to be stoked. I, I like it too. I'm. That, yeah, I, I don't got taken out of context. I wasn't saying anything terrible. I was just wondering. I have fuck a love. Ohio. I have a love. Yeah, hate also fuck Ohio. Ohio. Fuck everything so, forever. Amen. Yeah. I have a love hate relationship with Ohio. I love it. Cool. It hates him. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and the, I, is not allowed to go back. I, I had to move because of the attorney general. Fuck him. <laughs> and his quote unquote evidence. Yeah, sure. That's a good point. <laughs> like a murder joke. Let's pause for a 
Cool. Station coffee. Where's Joseph? Where's your favorite place to get coffee? I'm really glad you asked that. Joseph, uh, I'm sorry, we have run out of time. You're right. Uh, the next show is banging at the door. It's uh, as is every week. It's ESPN Seven. Uh, they're live LARPing. Uh, field notes from lightning bolt throwing. Yeah, field notes <laughs> from the battlefield. That's actually the name of my solo record. Yeah. <laughs> Is that where you got that? Field notes from the battlefield. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, we would like to thank uh, everyone. Uh, he used Ox's gourd. Thank you. Oh, and one thing I meant to ask you. I you, love you both. Have you ever been heckled by saying he whose ox is bored? Yes. Yeah, he who's Someone has said that? Annoying. Uh, on a mar- marquee. On a what? marquee? Here, here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call, I'm gonna call this guy out. Maddie from... Sayonara, you motherfucker! Oh. <laughs> when you were working, when you, you were working at the goddamn funhouse back in the day, it was like our, our second, first. It was, it was our, our first, first show? ever show. First show ever. First show ever. Uh, we show up. Metal Monday. He whose axe is bored. <laughs> yes. oh and we show up. He was just laughing. We're, while we're looking at he it. Waited we waited like just... five years to tell us about that, and then he laughed. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah, Dude, socks so are torn. Take Dude, that. socks are torn. Dude, <laughs> that's pretty there's, good. There's that's no, going no, out there. That joke is sincerely limitless. Yeah, like, we've. It can. It's like. It's moved through time, contemporary. I mean, do you guys like the joke or is like that so annoying? Oh, we Someone, love it. Oh, Someone yeah. said one time, this was one of my other favorites. It's great. She whose box is Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn. Yeah. You gotta get that porn star to make a movie with that title. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. hell yeah. Oh, shit. He, oh, he, and then it could be he whose cocks a sword. <laughs> That's very literal. Yeah, well, oh, I did my best. I did my best. I'll, I'll look, I my I'll best. I'm trying to talk to you guys, you know. <laughs> he points to his bandmates that he's known for years. <laughs> Just trying to have a good time. So. Yeah. We're working it out. <laughs> well, yeah, thanks again. Uh, how, how do people find you on the uh, internet? Google, I think if you Google their name, they're going to be the first thing that comes up. I don't out. know. Okay, yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, we, we, have a, we have a website. We have a website. She made it. What's the website? Uh, he, it's just hwoig.com, um, or you can get us on Facebook. Uh, he was or Ox's Gord. What is it? Seattle. Seattle. Yeah. We are on Twitter at uh, <laughs> as Ox is Gord. Get on there and talk a lot of shit. To and us. Instagram is He Who's Ox is Gord. Wait. So now that you're not watching Breaking Bad, is there a TV show that you're staying up late and talking shit about? What are we talking? About? What are we? Talking? We talked about. Honestly, we've been watching Game of Thrones. Yeah. Game of Thrones. But it just True ended. Detective. True, True Detective. detective. Have watching you watched that. the new season? Yeah. yeah. What do you think of it? I really like the first episode. I fucking <laughs> I've heard it. so far that I, I haven't watched hate the it. new season yet, but I heard that it's like so so. It's I just so it. like who can watch that? I cannot watch that. The first episode's great. <laughs> yeah. The first episode's great. The second episode there starts to be some really sketchy Vince Vaughn monologues. That's the thing is I can't buy Vince Vaughn. Like Colin Farrell. You've off. bought Vince Vaughn. I did like buy it. At a celebrity Vaughn. auction, you <laughs> went on a date. Yeah. You went to Theo Chocolate. I'm sorry, would you not like to go on a date nice. with Vince Vaughn? <laughs> I would. So that, nice. He was such a joke. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I would definitely go on a date. I'm just I, saying. I'm sexually so attracted to Vince Vaughn. Vaughn. That's what I'm saying. And true detective. <laughs> true detective and amplifiers and coffee. <clears throat> it's garbage. It's great. It's trash world. You're the most and destroyed. red tube. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this well, whole podcast has just been me talking about sex, yeah. just randomly. It Sorry. is getting a little warm in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is. Okay, uh, so that's an episode of Access on Purpose. This yeah. Keep putting one finger on the pause button uh, and one foot in the grave. And uh, fuck you for listening. It's aggressive. <laughs> <laughs>